everyone today is a very exciting video because i am doing a k-pop transformation i'm gonna get my hair and makeup done by a korean hairstylist and a makeup artist she's actually the makeup artist for the actress song jio so super excited the studio is based out in apgujong so i'm gonna head over there right now thank you so much to the intercorel team for arranging this for me i'm so excited for this so let's go maybe it could be something more Baby, it's always summertime. I did come like 15 minutes early, but I don't think anyone is here. I want this video to be a bit more informative on the different techniques my makeup artist Hemin Sem taught me. So starting off with tip number one, all the prep before the actual makeup is so important. I only had sunscreen on when I came in, so she used a toner pad to clean my face. I personally have pretty dark, thick eyebrows, so she trimmed them and cleaned them up. She even shaved my upper lip area, which I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of a humbling experience. Every time I get my makeup done by a Korean makeup artist, I realize they always prep the skin with a face mask. And I think this makes the biggest difference on how well the makeup sits and wears on your face throughout the day. For this K-pop idol look, she gave me some colored contacts. I personally never wear colored contacts because I tend to have dry eyes, but it's a must for a K-pop idol look. <laughs> This one is the Olin Scandi Grey Contact Lens and it was so pretty. She told me that this is a popular one among K-pop idols. When I put them on, oh my gosh, I immediately look so different. Tip number two for skin prep, use products that provide deep hydration but have a lightweight consistency. After the face mask, she layered on two different serums and a lightweight moisturizer. You want to avoid any thicker creams because it can cause your makeup to pill. Instead, try to use gel-like moisturizers that really gets absorbed into your skin and lets the makeup sit on top nicely. She also also used a benefit primer but only focused it on the areas that have larger pores and are more oily like my nose and t-zone area this is not exactly a tip but a little disclaimer before starting on the actual makeup process she did warn me that k-pop idols tend to tone up their face meaning they use foundation shades that are lighter than their actual skin tones i usually don't do this but since this is a k-pop idol transformation that's exactly what she did for me she used a pink tone up based sunscreen to even my skin tone and make it look brighter this is a bit of a nuanced subject but having fair light skin is a common beauty standard in Korea that many K-pop idols adhere to. In addition to that, I was told the purpose of toning up your face is also because it looks better under harsh stage lights and it makes the makeup colors pop more. Pro tip from the makeup artist, with your foundation, work in thin layers and only build up the coverage in areas that you need it to prevent your foundation from looking cakey. This is what gives the most skin-like application. When it was time for the lashes, I was so shocked because she used three different tools to curl them. First, she lit up a bamboo stick with a lighter and used the the residual heat to curl my lashes. She said that by doing it this way, the curls stay up longer and are curled in a more natural way, as opposed to using an actual lash curler. But she did use a regular eyelash curler at the base of my lashes to lift them from the roots. Then she went in with a smaller lash curler to get the ends to perk up more. Moving on to eyeliner, I never tight line my inner corners because I always thought that it made my eyes look smaller and more hooded. But today I learned that I was just doing it wrong. By adding a little bit of eyeliner on the inner corners, it really defines your eyes and makes them pop. The way she tightlined my inner corners were actually different for both eyes because I do have uneven eyes. And by doing that, I feel like she balanced out and evened out my eyes a little better. Also, instead of winging the eyeliner upwards, which is what people typically do, especially in the States, she drew my eyeliner straight and outwards to extend the shape instead. This is actually a lot more flattering for my rounder almond shaped eyes because it's accentuating my natural eye shape instead of forcing it to look a certain way. We're not done with the lashes just yet. She spent so much time adding individual false lashes on me because she's so meticulous about each lash placement. I will say this step made the biggest difference. It really gives that doll-like K-pop idol makeup look. Another slightly humbling experience. She asked if she could use double eyelid tape on my right eye because I do, like I said, have uneven eyelids. I've always known this, but people typically don't really notice that my right eye is slightly smaller than my left. But again, she's so good at what she does. She has such a good eye for detail. <laughs> You got the, the type of
Tomlin. Honestly, was super impressed at how thin and invisible the double eyelid tapes were. I forgot to get the brand for this, but she said that she uses a nude eyelid tape instead of a typical clear one because it's undetectable. Back to the lashes again. This time she's adding mascara and clumping up my lashes with tweezers to give it more of that doll-like look. Because I naturally have really dark brows, she tinted my eyebrows a shade lighter to give my face an overall softer look. This is a tip I learned from various Korean makeup artists on this trip, and I've been doing that every day since. I do think it makes a huge difference and makes my face look softer and more balanced and feminine overall. Before moving on to the other complexion products, she added another light layer of cushion foundation and some concealer to spot conceal all of my skin imperfections. One really good tip she gave me, she recommended that I use a pale blush under my eyes instead of trying to lighten up my dark circles with concealer, which can make the makeup overall look very thick and cakey. Using a pale blush to add more color to that area instead can actually help mask the darkness in a more natural way. She she used a cool tone light brown to contour the face and the nose. It was a very natural shade and it doesn't give that western bronze look that I'm typically used to seeing. For the lips, she first used a concealer to get rid of my natural lip line and then she layered on the lip tint, slightly overlining and then blurring the lip line and then adding some gloss to the center of the lips. After some final spot concealing, we were basically done at this point, but my face was so much lighter than my neck. So we added some tone of sunscreen and foundation to my neck and now we're off to get my hair done. This is Ha Jung Sam. She is a celebrity hairstylist and has worked on some of the top famous K pop actors and idols. She recommended either soft waves or straight hair, so I ended up choosing straight hair. And I thought that it would be quick and easy and kind of boring, but no. It is not just straight hair, this is idle straight hair. And it's not as simple as just using a hair straightener. First, she blow dried my hair to give it volume and straightened each section. She also decided to give me that trendy side bang look. She teased the top back of my head to give it even more volume and tied the front pieces of my hair back to give it a neat hair behind the ears kind of hairstyle. She hairsprayed everything in place and this is the final, <laughs> final look. Oh my At this point, honestly, I could not even recognize myself in the mirror. I look so different. Hopefully this video was fun and informative and maybe you learned a makeup trick or two. Let me know in the comments what you think about my transformation. Do you think I can pull off being a K-pop idol? Thank you always for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!